Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we take a look at a recent video from a palm color woman which has sparked outrage and for a good reason. Now her attempt to rewrite history and absorb palm color women of their role in systemic artism has been roughly debunked by my fellow black brothers and sisters. Claiming palm color women had nothing, literally nothing to do with slavery, imagine that, which is a glaring falsehood that ignores the complexities of artism and oppression. Now the black community has responded, setting the record straight. Historical facts reveal a disturbing truth. Palm color women were complicit in slavery, benefited from its injustices, and perpetrated artism. From the 15th Amendment's limited scope to the Voting Rights Act of 1967, the legacy of palm color feminism is riddled with harmful omissions and erasures. Now, in this video, we'll take a look into the troubled past of palm color feminism, addressing the myths of palm color women's innocence in slavery and artism, the harmful legacy of palm color feminism, the erasure of black women's struggles and contributions, and the importance of intersectionality in modern feminism. So, with that said, Let's take a look at her video as my fellow black brothers and sisters react to her video. Dear black women, so I did a video yesterday addressing specifically black women. I just wanted to see how long my video would last before being taken down for violating community standards. Didn't take long. So, as a woman, we have blazed these trails together. We did this together. We need to stand together. Women, to include black women, got the right to vote after men. They're still leading the race. It's still not equal. Equality, equal pay. We still get less on the dollar. So why are you alienating a high percentage of allies? Like, why are you doing this? Separation will lead nowhere. And in the real world, aside from TikTok, we have to bargain together. We have to do this together. Why are you alienating? And what constitutes white? This is 2024, and most of us are blended. My family is blended. You know, I have um, cousins that are married to beautiful black women or uh, even black men. Um, so there's a lot of mixed in my family. And in, so if it's just a black pack, like, what, where do you draw the line? Only certain black people, because I have 2% Nigerian. Am I allowed in? I think we all should be allowed in because we're women and this is our battle together. I don't know if you noticed, but the world is still being run by men. Men that love war and that love keeping us divided. So why would you want to divide yourselves? Women had nothing to do with slavery, literally, like nothing. I'm sure we were saying, hey, babe, this is pretty effed up because we're nurturing, we're loving, it's wrong. That was men. So why this hate on white women? What has a white woman? Because we're somewhat married to white men. My husband's not a racist or uh, we're Gen X. Like we grew up together. I went to school. I learned so much from the black culture because of desegregation and I loved it. Rockin' a robin all night long, puffin' a puffin' and we're, and we're doing the double dutch. Like I, I loved it and we were friends. So I don't know what happened and why there's this divide and especially when we all need each other. Can can someone let me know what's what's going on and what changed to all the hate on white women because I would certainly like to know what happened. Because I don't feel like I I we all have friends that are diverse. So 
do you think there's some little pocket of, you know, a place where we're not all interacting, engaging, um, in the neighborhood, it's, it's diverse. So what happened to where there's black pack hate against white women? Um, I, I don't know what, what happened? Why, why are you guys mad at white women? Could, I mean, seriously, I, I just want to know. I mean, my friends didn't get the memo, you know, I have a beautiful, um, friend that has a doctorate. It's tons. I have every ethnicity of friends. I don't know if they get the memo because we still love each other. So I don't, I don't know. Are these educated black pack? Like what? I don't know. Someone let me know. Okay. Thanks. Bye. No, they did not. In the year 1870, the 15th Amendment was passed, giving black men the right to vote. In the year 1920, the 19th Amendment was passed, giving white women the right to vote, not black women. Black women would not get the right to vote until the year 1965 when the Voting Rights Bill was passed. And as we examine the historical record of U.S. history, white feminism is an extension of white male supremacy because these white feminist movements have dehumanized and degraded black women. Please study history. Please get an understanding. Where to begin? I know. I know you said dear black women and I'm not a woman first and foremost, but I am black. But I did see your video off of one of my mutuals pages. So she duetted you and I watched the entire thing. So there was so much inaccuracy in gaslighting in your video that I just felt the need to respond. You um, tokenized family members in your video. That's a white supremacy tactic. You also state that you were 2% Nigerian. When you look in the mirror, do you see that 2% Nigerian? Cause I can look at you right now and tell you're not black. Whether you have 2%, 10% or 12%. Just as you can look at me and see that I am not white, even though I have 18% Northern European in my blood. Which is a whole lot more than your 2%. Historically, white women have not stood together with black women even when it came to getting the right to vote. Whether you got it after men and black men and whoever else, you've always voted against your best interest. White women will choose whiteness over the sisterhood of all women. White women saw this whole Roe versus Wade thing coming and still voted for Trump. White women voted against their best interests, so black women tried to tell you you didn't listen. But it really irked us when you said white women didn't have slave they didn't have anything to do with slavery you're like honey we probably you this is a bet no 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 i'm not like that you push that white woman talking point what we're not gonna do is overlook the massive role of female slave owners this is from the history channel 
we're going to unmask the many white women were southern slave owners too. We're going to talk about how white women invest white women's investment in slavery has shaped America. Black people were the property of white women as they were slave owners in America. Then we're going to talk about the intersection of white women, slave owners, economics, and the law. There's a book you should probably read called They Were Her Property. Speaking about slaves and white women. So the gas lights and stop here. Leave my sisters alone because you do not serve their best interests. You are part of the problem. You should probably learn history before you come on here and try to gaslight my sisters. Have the day you deserve, ma'am. My life mission is to make white women like you feel uncomfortable and feel like your life is unfair. Always. You all have this misguided entitlement. It was given to you. And then when white men wanted it back, they threw you away. What do you mean white women didn't own slaves? Yes, y'all did, and y'all black men. And I, I haven't even dived in the area of you black women. Y'all with their babies. So stop this with the fact that y'all are so loving and caring. That has died a long time ago. See, that part right there is the new white lady tears. Yeah, you don't like it because you got a community, a community violation off a video you purposely made to see if you would get one. And now you up here with social media tears. No one cares. Literally no one. And the fact that black women don't want to vote the way you want black women to vote, so be it. Because some of these black women probably are benefiting off all the other things that men benefit from, especially business owners. The fact that you mentioned that you want to know if these people are educated or not. How can you be so educated and don't understand simple things such as black women don't have to move to a bit of your drum or white women, period. And you don't have to be educated to understand that your time of being a Miss Emperor is over. You need to come down a few notches. Yeah. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, too bad others do. Get a little educated. It's the fact that you brung up, you got black family members and some of your friends are black and they don't think like that. Well, whoop to do. I don't care about that. What I do care about is the fact that you think that black women should be led about by you because you're a white woman. Politics, sorry, it's not about allyship. It's individuals making a decision to see what is best for them. You have your white nerve to set up here and act like that. So forever and ever and ever, when you see a beautiful black woman, whether you she's educated or not, Remember that you are not above black women. You are not superior. You never have been. You were just placed that way. And now it is time for you to bow down, babe. You're no better than anyone. How about you leave us alone? How about you quit trying to use us to boost yourself? How about you understand that you are white? You're not 2% Nigerian. I don't give a shit what some mail-in DNA test says. You will never understand what black women have dealt with in this country and continue to deal with on a regular basis. So please, 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 please stop trying to jump onto our backs because our backs are tired okay we're tired we're over it we're so tired of it 
Okay? We're tired of being the heroes for people. We're tired of being the solidarity for everybody. We're tired of rallying the troops for everybody. We are tired. You know what else we're tired of? White women. You. You. White women. Jumping on apps. Claiming 2% of something. And then expecting us to jump in and open arm give you some love and 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 tout you around like oh my god she hey sis girl because in a moment's notice you would turn on us and, and use your white your white woman tears to condemn us all to hell girl bye this is not to harass or bully this is for educational purposes only you all can go and Check out that video and the rest of her account. And I'm doing this so that you can become aware of the type of white women that are extremely dangerous to the cause. Her entire page will give you the example of delusion that they live in and that they invite you to live in. Oh, excuse me. Um. So, um... A video, the one that, that I uh, stitched this with, I don't even know where to start with her. Who's going to tell her? Who's going to tell her? Um, her white counterparts won't tell her. There's so much to that video that just screams racism. Um, from her saying that white women had no role in slavery to her saying we all need to work together. Um, she's a pick me, a pick me. You can't be one of us. You're not black. You don't aspire to be black. You don't even want to be black. You just want to be a part of something that does not include you. And that's the black and the black culture. Anything that black women have done, white women have benefited from. She is so far off base. I just wonder, like, you know, I would never put labels on anyone, but the things that she's saying makes absolutely no sense. Why can't we work together? Work together to do what? I don't think she understands that black women will work anyway. It's what we do. It's what we do. Why don't you go and do you? Why don't you rally your troops together? And why don't you guys make an impact? Why do you need black women to help you? Help you do what? I, you're, uh, I'm just flabbergasted. I mean, truly and truly, I'm having my lunch here, grapes. Um, but she, she, I, I don't even know what to say to her. Um, She's had a lot of stitches on that video. The only thing I can say is that she's trying to be a pick me. She reminds me of a director of nurses, nursing I know. Um, this director loves to say black names. Like say if they hire somebody black, they just want to say their name like um, Shaheen. Like, so what? I mean, so you want kudos because you hire somebody black. It just And this person just reminds me so much of that director. It's, it's just really, really sad. If you get a chance... Go back and look at her her message, but again, allies, y'all could have her. You you really can. Why don't Why don't you all, the allies, my allies, you know, reach out and maybe try to talk to her and tell her that being a pick me is not a good look. That the black population really have don't want to have anything to do with her, and that we don't want to work with her. We have nothing. Against working with our allies, absolutely, we'll work with our allies, and I have some great allies, and I love them dearly, and. Yeah, those are allies, not pick me's, not, hey, pick me. Why can't we do this? Because we don't want you, because we don't like you, because you're phony, because you've done everything from the white woman tears to the gaslighting to the woe is me to all that kind of stuff that we see straight through. So, no, we don't want to work with you. Your own don't even want to work with you. So, I don't know. So... You go on to say that as a woman, we we black and white women historically have blazed trails together. Like like this one. Like that one, right? What you later go on to say that white women had nothing to do with slavery in this country. This country. White women had nothing to do with slavery when in actuality, there were laws put in place because the white women slave owners were so 
goddamn brutal. If you haven't read this book, I need you to. You sound absolutely stupid right now. You continue on to ask why do white women get all this hate? Look at yourself in the mirror and then answer that question. Ask the question again. You are absolutely tone deaf. And for you to say that you have 2% Nigerian, the audacity, the amount of gaslighting in this one video alone is enough to blow up an entire building. This is disgusting. You grew up with black people playing double dutch and singing rock and robin by the Jackson. We don't give a damn lady. We don't trust you. Unbelievable. I, the year, the year of our Lord, 2024 and white women like this one are still asking why black women don't trust them. <laughs> I can't, you can't make this vote. Go back, <sighs> go listen to this dribble. Go listen to the, the, the words that are coming out of this woman's mouth. Now, I'm not really going to touch much on the voting rights because the brothers already brought out crucial facts debunking the lies, highlighting the struggles of black women who fought for universal suffrage despite being marginalized by palm color women and palm color men. But I want to set the record straight on a claim she made that palm color women were not active in slavery. Well, this turns out to be false. Most Americans know that George Washington owned enslaved people at his Mount Vernon home, but few probably know that it was his wife, Martha, who dramatically increased the enslaved population there. When they wed in 1759, George may have owned around 18 people. Martha, one of the richest women in Virginia, owned 84. Now, the high number of people Martha Washington owned is unusual, but the fact that she owned them is not. Stephanie E. Jones Rogers, a history professor at the University of California, is compiling data on just how many palm color women owned slaves in the U.S. and in the parts of the 1850 and 1860 census data. She started so far that palm color women make up about 40% of all slave owners. Slaveholding parents typically gave their daughters more enslaved people than land, says Jones Rogers, whose book, They Were Her Property, Palm Color Women as Slave Owners in the American South, came out in February 2019. What this means is that their very identities as palm color southern women are tied to the actual or the possible ownership of other people. Now, palm color women were active and violent participants in the slave market. They bought, sold, managed, and sold the return of enslaved people in whom they had a vested economic interest. Owning a large number of enslaved people made a woman a better marriage prospect. Once married, palm color women fought in courts to preserve their legal ownership over enslaved people as opposed to their husband's ownership and often won. For them, slavery was their freedom, Jones Rogers observes in her book. They were her property upends a lot of older scholarship. For example, previous scholars have argued that most Southern palm color women didn't buy, sell, or inflict violence on enslaved people because this was considered improper for them. But Jones Rogers argues that palm color women were actually trained to participate from a very, very young age. Now, their exposure to the slave market is not something that begins in adulthood. It begins in their homes when they are little girls, sometimes infants, when they are given enslaved people as gifts. She says, citing interviews with formerly enslaved people that the Works Progress Administration, a new deal agency conducted in the 1930s, Jones Rogers shows that part of palm color children's training in plantation management involved beating enslaved people. Now, it didn't matter whether the child was large or small, one woman told the WPA, they always beat you until the blood ran down. As adults, palm color women often tore black women away from their babies so they could nurse their palm color mistress baby instead. Now, to this end, palm color women placed thousands of advertisements in newspapers looking for enslaved work nurses to feed their own children and created a huge market for enslaved black women who had recently given birth. Why did these palm color women want black women to nurse their children? One complained she felt like continuously having children and continuously nursing her children made her a slave to her children. That's an actual quote. 
Jones Rogers says, Now some black women reported in WPA interviews that their mothers would always give birth around the same time as the Pamkala mistress, suggesting that these mistresses were also orchestrating the ace assault of enslaved women. Now there were instances in which formerly enslaved people did in fact say that their mistresses either sanctioned acts of ace violence against them that were perpetrated at the hands of Pamkala men or that they orchestrated instances of ace violence between two enslaved people that they owned in hopes of producing children from those acts of s violence jones rogers says now pamkala women also fought to maintain the wealth and free labor that slavery provided them through the civil war as union troops made their way through the south freeing enslaved people pamkala women would move enslaved people further from the soldier's path one woman martha gibbs even took enslaved people to texas and forced them to work for her at Pew Pew Point until 1866, a year after slavery's formal abolition. Now, after the Civil War, Southern Pamkala women sought to recreate slavery through exploitative work contracts. Some also wrote books portraying the institution of slavery as gentle and benign. The most famous being Gone with the Wind by Margaret Michelle, a woman born 35 years after abolition. Yet as Jones Rogers argues in her book, it was not only Pamkala women's ideological and sentimental connections to slavery that made them defend it. Scarlett O'Hara wouldn't have been protecting her economic interests too. To be honest, her claim really left me stunned. I don't know if it's ignorance or what, but we all know the truth. Pamkala women were active participants in slavery, benefiting from its injustices and perpetrating artism. They managed plantations on slaves and profited from forced labor. Some even abused and brutalized enslaved people. Now, historical records and scholars like Stephanie Jones Rogers, they were her property and bell hooks and tie a woman have extensively documented palm color women's roles in slavery. I feel this misinformation aims to absorb palm color women of their responsibility in perpetrating systemic artism. But we won't let facts be erased. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts as well in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another video.